live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. year covering HP uh, and, and 50 year in Barcelona with uh, HP. We've been in Frankfurt. We've been in Vegas. Obviously, all the shows. I'm John Furrier, the host, and my co-host is Dave Vellante with Wikibon.org, and we're excited to be on the ground, get all the data, share that with you here on the Cube, our live format, the ESPN of tech, uh, as we call it. But more importantly, to talk to the guests, to get social, to get talking about the real issues, and get into the to the data around HP. Uh, uh, Dave, my co-host, Dave, uh, HP. Certainly, uh, you know, it's like it's like a broken record for us every time we come out here. HP's on the turnaround, and they're constantly trying to, to, to take the turn. It's like a boat that's, you know, moving slowly, and it's just, it just hits more waves of more more turbulence as it goes along. And, you know, Meg Whitman is, is moving as fast as she can, and, and some critics are saying not fast enough. Recent earnings are down, and obviously the recent announcement since our last Cube is the split of their PC and printer consumer business from the enterprise business. It's something that we were, I was critical of, um, and now it, it seems that it's just the tide can't turn uh, for HP to keep those two together. Uh, Dave, what's your take? I mean, obviously HP still banging the drum. I mean, we still see people really excited. It's like, I mean, there's almost two versions of HP, the outside version and the inside version. I want to get your take. Well, so John, uh, as you know, we've been following this for quite some time, and I have said over and over and over, HP has to shrink in order to grow, in order to thrive, and that's exactly what's happening. HP's revenue peaked in 2011 at 127 billion, and the company in its last quarter uh, fiscal year ended just recently in Q4, but the year did 112 billion. So you can see it's it's down significantly now. Meg Whitman is certainly talking about uh, the decelerating rate of decline. So those are my words, not her words. But they're they're they're, they're shrinking more slowly than they were in the past, and there are areas of uh, of growth and pockets of growth. The issue is those pockets of growth aren't enough to offset the declines in the historical business. And I think if you look at HP's business breakout, the break up that you talk about, that split, um, which is essentially taking the PC and printer business, the consumer, low margin business, splitting it off from the enterprise group, is an inevitable uh, occurrence. If you look at the compares with HP uh, and some of its competitors and just look at the, the underlying profitability of those businesses, there's a stark contrast. HP overall is about a 25% gross margin business. Even Dell um, had about a 21% gross margin business, so HP and Dell were very comparable. Both companies provided end-to-end -end services. When HP splits out, Dell will be the only company left, John, that provides those end-to-end -end services, and of course Dell thrives on very low gross margin business. But let me give you some compares, just to compare the fundamental business model as I say, HP was 24%, 24.6% gross margin. Oracle, who also sells hardware. Oracle has an 80% gross margin business, of course, driven by Oracle software. EMC, a, largely a hardware company, 62% gross margin. Again, uh, even though it owns you know, VMware, most of its revenue comes from hardware. NetApp, virtually a pure hardware company, 63% gross margin. IBM, a decent compare to HP, has 49% gross margin. John, Amazon has 29% gross margins, higher than HP. So this split between the consumer vision and the enterprise division really is a recognition of the inevitable. They're two different businesses with two different business models. Uh, and the question remains whether or not something that HP used to talk about, that end-to-end -end capability, which now Dell claims is it's the only company. Has. I don't know if anybody cares. Well, Dave, one of the things that we watch closely, obviously, is, is the mega trends. We've been on them since we started working together with SiliconANGLE, Wiki Bond, and you know, we've picked every winning trend there is out there. You go back to Hadoop and big data and certainly hyperscale, converged infrastructure. And to me, the next trend that we see happening is certainly around cloud. And I think HP has recognized that. And one of the things that we'll be teasing out is what's going on with HP in the cloud. Because obviously HP is one of those companies like IBM, like Dell, 
the old school, include Microsoft in that as well, with kind of as, as an OEM software supplier, mm -hmm. that have to evolve and change. And I think what's going on in the next mega trend is what Amazon is doing. What Amazon has done is that they built from the ground up a fully integrated end-to-end -end platform for infrastructure to service. And what they've enabled is for people to build the middleware required to extend that out. Now what this really does is disrupts the old incumbent markets of server vendors like HP and others who sold storage, servers, things in the silo. So what's happening is, is what Amazon is telegraphing in their success, uh, you mentioned gross margins, but mostly in terms of now enterprise penetration, is that the consumption of IT and the consumption of technology is changing, and that certainly is changing HP very dramatically. And even five years ago when we started talking with these guys here in theCUBE, um, you saw the shift clearly almost 180 degrees different. It was, hey, we have server speeds and feeds, we got all this great technology, and we supply that. Now it's shifting to the data center conversations about integration. How do I integrate all these different products together to solve business outcomes? And ultimately, the customers of HP care about certainly the cost to do that, but more importantly, to enable new applications. The rise of the mobile infrastructure is one. The cloud is changing security. We're going to hear a lot about security here around perimeterless IT. That means that the security models are no longer around securing the perimeter, securing the DMZ, or in the data center, the old ways are changing. HP has to evolve into an end-to-end -end platform for their customers to be a tool chest for success, not a, you know, um, an inhibitor for them. So to me, Dave, I think that's going to be fundamentally the signals that I'll be looking for on this trip is how much is HP changing around the data center customer, their core base, and certainly that migration to the cloud and everything that's affected by that, whether it's big data software and or applications, including and more importantly, security. Yeah, so John, the, when you, you talked earlier, I talked about the split of the two companies. HP's PC and printer business is about half of the revenue and the balance is obviously the enterprise uh, hardware, software, and services. I want to give you another little data point and underscore the importance that I've talked about a, a lot, is the importance of HP software business. Uh, HP software business in the quarter was just over a billion dollars. That's out of about a $30 billion uh, business for the, for the quarter, a little under 30 billion for HP. So it's software business, while it's very small, throws off about $340 million in profit or a profit margin of about 31% operating profits. No other HP business, John, can even touch that level of profit. So an imperative for HP, in my opinion, is to increase the contribution from software. We saw IBM do this you know, a decade and a half ago. Uh, clearly it's benefiting Oracle. Uh, you know, the VMware contribution to EMC obviously helps a lot. So companies, large enterprise companies, need to have greater software contributions, we certainly talked about this in, uh, at, at Dell World a few weeks ago. And you're also seeing Amazon, while it's not considered a big software player, it's really an infrastructure player, but trying to replicate software like margin models uh, at volume. So their marginal cost structure is very, very strong. I wrote about this recently. So the point is that HP's got to do more there. So what are its software assets? Really the two growth areas for HP software are Vertica, which grew in the high double digits, and security, uh, which came from a number of, uh, of acquisitions, HP as an ArcSight product, and other security capabilities, which are quite strong. So those are growth areas for HP, but again, John, they're, they're very small. Now the autonomy piece of the business, HP is trying to shift that to a SaaS model. You wrote about this recently. And so, you know, HP's in, in this, uh, Meg Whitman calls it a non-linear turnaround. Transitions and turnarounds tend to be non-linear, and clearly this turnaround is, is non-linear. Last point I want to make is, what's the ultimate judge of a turnaround? How, how the company's doing the stock market? So since Meg Whitman came on, there's, the stock is up 70%, uh, and in the past 12 months, it's up 41%. So that's a pretty good indicator that the street sees that the turnaround is working, and we can talk more about why, uh, but I think, John, there's a lot of upside to go. I mean, HP is still not where it needs to be. Yeah, I mean, obviously HP has a lot of uh, market power in terms of their balance sheet and cash, and, uh, and, uh, and they do a lot of revenue. The question is how much of that's profit? And I think that the printer uh, challenge has been a focus issue and a cultural issue. 
In order for HP to win the battleground in the enterprise, our core business, they have to have a dedicated focus on that. And that's about organic uh, development of products. And also being free from the debt to do acquisition. So, you know, clearly there's a lot of opportunities HP has from an M&A standpoint on the enterprise side. But also the cash cow of the consumer business, if pushed out on the side, could work well. Look what, what IBM has done with Lenovo. I think HP looks at that success and says, hey, let's shed that business out as a separate entity so they can be highly cohesive and decouple that execution risk from the enterprise. It allows them to focus their resources and keep their people motivated. And, you know, Dave, I think that's the real opportunity for them is to really kind of navigate the waters of both the inflection point and the shift that's going on. And I think fundamentally that is what's happening in this market for, from what I'm talking to customers, that's the number one thing that comes up is that in this time in history of the computer industry, now, you know, I don't know we're going through an inflection point and shift at the same time. Sorry, I, I don't know if there's a flip side to that, that split, and I, I, don't, I honestly don't know the answer to this, but something I want to find out while we're here is, is there a supply chain impact? You know, um, they don't talk about it much anymore, but remember when Dave Donatelli used to come on, he talked about a $60 billion supply chain that HP had. When IBM spun off, its, it uh, sold its PC business, it lost that supply chain advantage. It lost even more of it with its x86 sale to Lenovo. I don't know. I guess the structure of HP is Maggie's still the chairman of both companies, right? So there's still sort of one entity with two tracking stocks, I guess. So I, I, I think, I presume they can still have supply chain leverage, but I don't know the answer to that. And if they can't, that's going to have a, a profitability impact. But to your point, they're going to be more focused. If you look at the, the cash cows of the business, it's printers uh, and, it's, and it's the enterprise business. Both of those throw off over a billion dollars a quarter in profits. Uh, and so, so the interesting uh, wild card here, John, is nobody predicted that the PC market was going to grow this year. The revenues in the PC market grew about 4%. And what happened at companies like, certainly uh, uh, Dell and, and HP, is they had baselined their cost structure. All of a sudden, the revenues go up. That, that dropped right to the bottom line and hit both companies with free yeah. cash flow. You so, know, you know, HP is is doing very well from a cash flow standpoint. It still has a lot of debt, so it's net cash position. If you, in other words, you take the cash on the balance sheet and subtract out the long-term debt, it's actually you know basically zero net cash. I mean, HP has the resources, no doubt about it. Certainly the debt is a problem, that's going to inhibit their M&A, but you know, I think they're going to free that up. But the thing that I look at with HP is they have the resources, they have the team, they have the people, and the question is, can they put the team together? It's kind of like you know the Yankees, and they're not winning anymore, but they have the highest payroll. And this, what they have to do is get the, get the players on the field, get them focused, get them on the execution plan that they need to be successful, and recognize product gaps, and put the M&A in place, do the tuck unders, go out to the marketplace, buy where you can't organically move fast, enough and put the product portfolio together. And it's clearly going to be the battleground, in my opinion, will be the cloud. Software as a service is how customers are going to be rolling out their, uh, their, their solutions. And I think if HP wants to be part of that and the data center going forward, up the stack, they need to be focused that way. So I'm excited this week, Dave. A couple other things I want to share with the audience is that we're going to add a new element to theCUBE this year. I'm going to include some influencers out there that are watching uh, on CrowdChat. We have Tim Crawford who's online. Hey Tim, how are you? Good to see you again. Tim Crawford is always on CrowdChat and, uh, and participating. He's actually here at the event. We're going to go out and try to get the influencers who are here on the ground to get questions into theCUBE. And if you're watching, go to crowdchat.net slash hpdiscover. We'll field your questions, uh, talk to you guys, and, and, and ask the guests the same question. Um, Tim, Tim asked, so talk about security on CrowdChat. Uh, great point, and when I brought up perimeter security, he says, you know, um, What's the current state or future state? Are they connecting the dots between the current and future state of security? That's a good question. We'll ask uh, their top guys that question. Do they have situational awareness for their customers? Are they enabling that? What solutions are they putting in place for threats and, and breaches? A very big, very big point. And also, you know, Tim makes a good point here. If HP moves more to software and services, doesn't that limit the supply chain argument and key for the, any position? Yeah, that's really the point I was making. Um, is, is are they losing supply chain leverage by, by splitting the, the company up? I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, they very well may be, although it's a different, if it's a different structure that certainly that IBM sold off its PC division, so they still own that. So I would think if I'm a, if I'm a, a, an HP buyer internally and I've got you know, suppliers, I'm going to squeeze them just like I used to. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's a competitive strategy question. I think supply chain, Tim's point, and Jeff Rick points out as well, a lot of power in the supply chain. I think HP can use that as leverage to put together the formula for success. They should be leveraging their strengths 
downplaying their weaknesses, get the product gaps filled, and we'll see what happens, Dave. So I think ultimately, you know, the, the, the jury's still out, out on HP, obviously, this headroom and the stock, obviously look at their execution, they're getting pounded on Wall Street and with the earnings miss, you mentioned the little bump up. But I think ultimately the execution will 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 tell the story. Yeah, we'll that earnings miss is interesting. I mean it was mixed. You know, a lot of people interpret it as an earnings mix, but I interpret it as an earnings miss, but I interpret it as actually a missed quarter because there was good news and bad news in there. The, the good news is as I said, the the rate of decline is slowing. Okay, I don't know if that's great news, but it's progress. Uh, the other good news in there is cash. So HP has, has, has laid out, used to, used to think about use of cash, it's laid out about a billion dollars in the past year um, in stock buybacks and dividend payments. Now, it's funny, two years ago I was talking to Meg Whitman at one of the analyst meetings, and we were talking about you know different companies and competitors. She said, you know, IBM is really just doing a lot of financial engineering to keep its stock price up. And I said, yeah, it would be nice if you could do some of that. And that's exactly what's happening now, is they're throwing off some cash, HP's doing buybacks, they're, they're, they're paying dividends, and that's helping the stock price. That's what you can do with cash. You can buy companies, you can buy bad, back stock, and you can financially engineer. I wanted to make another point, you brought up cloud. HP doesn't really explicitly break out its cloud business. It talks about it, it talks about its products, but unlike Oracle, I have to give Oracle props here. I, very critical of Oracle frequently, but I have to give them props on, they lay out their cloud business, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. They tell us each quarter how big the revenue is, how fast it's growing. Now, you can you can criticize Oracle, say, oh, they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink in the cloud like Microsoft does. But generally speaking, this is real rental revenue. So I give Oracle props for that. I want to see that out of, out of HP. I want to see more transparency in cloud. Love to see more transparency from Amazon on cloud. You know, IBM gives guidance, but again, not as crisp as Oracle. So that's something to watch here because essentially, John, that enterprise business that, that throws off a billion dollars in profit every quarter, that's going to cloud. You know, Dave, one of the things that's highlighting here, and I want to get your thoughts on what you're looking for over the next three days as we broadcast live from Europe and Barcelona here for HP Discover, what you're looking for. But I want to just say one thing that's coming out clear in the early releases, I've got the embargo of all the news and stuff, is the channel strategy. You're seeing HP coming out, and I think what you'll see over the next couple of days is a real emphasis around services. And you know, to Tim Crawford's point about supply chain brings the question of the supply chain being a manufacturing concept to more of a service delivery concept. So I think what you're going to see from HP is really leveraging of this channel and the supply chain. I, I misunderstood his point, by the way. His point was, if they move more towards, if my point, if they move more towards software and services, doesn't that limit the supply chain argument? Well, yes and no, right? If they still got a big supply chain, they can well, leverage it. I mean, look it. at what Amazon's but, done. But, they got their own supply chain, so they could offer that well, solution. I, but I guess my point is, I would take the 80%, 90% gross margin business over the supply chain leverage any day, is I guess my Well, it depends how you define supply chain. To my point, and the crowd captain weighed in on that as well. But I think they still have a $60 billion supply chain. I, I don't know the answer to that when they split, but I got to believe they still can leverage that supply chain. Well, I mean, look, at if everyone is going to, like, if Amazon is an indicator of where the market's going, they're building their own boxes. I think HP's laid business point here from Chuck Smith one of our first guests up to talk about that. You're seeing the supply chain could be very powerful in the higher end servers. And that's where IBM is also going after the market. You're seeing the high end servers, what used to be called mission critical, are now becoming the table stakes for the entry level servers. And I think that's where the action will be. Not every enterprise can go out and buy their own white label boxes, but could get a little bit of open compute and do some real footprint work around their data center that is enabled for cloud. I think that will be a big thing. So let's talk more about cloud. I mean, you were at, at reInvent. I, I didn't make it this year, but a um, lot of momentum coming out of that show. Where do you, let's lay out the horses on the track, you know, the cloud players. I mean, obviously Amazon is the, the gold standard. Everybody likes to say, oh, well, you look at the surveys, small portion of the world is moving workloads to public cloud, but you go to reInvent, a lot of people moving workloads to the public cloud. What's your take on, on the cloud? Well, my take on the, you know I'm really bullish on Amazon, so you, you know I'm biased here, so I'm a big fan. I'm an Amazon fanboy, so disclose that right up front. I love what Amazon's doing. I think what Amazon has done is will be viewed as a historic moment in history of the computer industry. They are doing what Andy Chassie and his team is doing is there. They have completely changed the game. They were a misunderstood 
uh, opportunity. People still don't understand the black box at Amazon. I do, you do, we've dug in there. They are absolutely taking advantage of the inflection point in the market and the shift. And the shift is dollars in the enterprise and how people are moving workloads into a good economics. So what they're doing is innovating and driving costs down. That to me is a fundamental shift where the notion of a platform will be commoditized down to, to, to uh, just commodity levels. And I think the big battleground that Amazon is fighting and you're seeing as a telltale of what will be happening over the next five years is the tooling and the packaging of the services will be where the game is won and lost. I think HP, Dave, has to have a platform that is as large scale as Amazon, but yet fits tailor-made to their customer requirements, which is on-premise and in the cloud. So I think what Amazon is showing I think the world, and if HP's paying attention, they should see this, is that you could have to have your own cloud. I think people were saying, I don't want to buy into HP's cloud, so and so, HP has to have their own cloud. I talked to some of the top venture capitalists in Silicon Valley, and the word on the street is, they, are, they don't trust Amazon, because they don't know where Amazon's going to go, and they don't know what, what cards are Amazon's holding. Uh, they tell us that they love OpenStack ventures, that they're going to fund OpenStack because OpenStack is more predictable. And I think that's where you're going to start to see the lines in the sand drawn. How, how much does HP continue to drive OpenStack and what do they take on the table for themselves in this middleware environment? That to me is fundamentally where the cloud action is going to happen and we'll see what the, the top guys here say in the cloud group, Dave. So again, cloud is just the big lever in the market. HP's got a lot of stuff wrapping around, security, applications, and a lot of other services. So we'll see what it takes and uh, we're going to get to it. Uh, this is theCUBE, we're live here in Barcelona for HP Discover Europe 2014 is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Join the conversation at crowdchat.net slash HP Discover. We'll look for your questions there. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.